We have knives and lemons. And ten songs each from our list. Yeah, this is number 50 to 41. Suckers. Starting with me. All oh, right! My first song is a nice happy one called Street Spirit Fade Out. Yeah, Street Spirit. It's like yeah. a block party. <laughs> street like, Spirit. <laughs> hey guys, you're all Rose into this. Of houses are laying down on me. No, um, uh, Somebody <laughs> brought wine coolers. <laughs> Somebody once told me Rosa houses were rowing down on me. Uh, Right, um, <coughs> uh, too far. Uh, Street Spirit Fade Out by Radiohead, for real though, is an extremely haunting, um, I only really heard it fairly recently, but once I did, it was just kind of like, I just kind of froze, it was just incredibly like, I mean, you know, beautiful guitar part, uh, incredibly haunting vocals, because like, Tom York has two styles of vocals for me, amazingly haunting or agonizing. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm citing like, everything in its right place here, which is like, Everything is right place. That that whole sound just sounds like when when you open an eight bit video game and you're like stuck on the start screen and, and, and it's, it's like you know it's gl it's glitching and you have like a castle you're looking at with a dark sky. It's like doo doo doo, you know. So what about your number fifty, John? All right, my number fifty is one that Mia will almost certainly have higher on her list. It is Knights of Sidonia by Muse. Correct. And it is a epic it's kind of got the night beat part with the the night beat part <laughs> and then it's all like building up into the kind of like the town's gonna take oh no me away. oh no it started again <gasps> the time has come to did you need an or man what the <laughs> you know what doesn't even happen to this particular song <laughs> maybe it doesn't maybe that's why it's the one on my list because it's, it's, he's better oh. about it <laughs> it, it at least seemed like on the later albums they finally like were like Got dude maybe inhaler. don't <laughs> yeah. dude maybe don't like I feel like earlier producers had him like, like actually had him do that to sound dramatic or something and uh, it was a terrible idea yeah they should be fired I they are their former producers I, okay they started producing themselves which is weird because maybe they just told themselves to shut up uh, yeah in any case great uh, epic yeah. Yes, it is. I agree. Speaking of no one taking me alive, what's your number 40? No one taking me alive. Today, the day I tried to live by Soundgarden. You Great know, I transition. mean. transition. That's why they pay <laughs> us the big bucks. Do they pay us the big bucks? I didn't get the memo. Oh, I mean, uh, no, definitely not. That's, Should why, I be looking that's in why you have to have dog food for dinner, Mia. Should I be looking in the closet for like a no, double bag? No, you can't look in the closet. <laughs> All right, I've folks, we'll just take a brief <laughs> hiatus and as I uh, lock that closet, and then we'll be right back. All right. Okay. Right, uh, so that... All right, we're all good? <laughs> Man, you, you didn't tell me I shouldn't speak over it. Um, Yeah, The Day I Tried to Live by Soundgarden. Uh, another another one of those grungy songs with a great, like, central vocal performance that the band follows along really well. I mean, it, it's like the intro is, like, somewhat different. Like, meow, meow, meow. It's like this really beautiful slide guitar thing, and then suddenly you have the rhythm section coming, boom, 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 boom. obviously leading into like the central Chris Cornell vocal part, in which he uh, discusses uh, being a depressed dude who um, tries to live, tries to live, and tries to go out and be like everyone else, you know, just like you. And it, it, it's always a sort of thing that struck me. I think it was the song I heard that I was like, man, maybe I should listen to a little more Soundgarden because it, it definitely I relate a little too heavily to. Um, the idea of kind of like being a depressed uh, sort of life Orange singer in Seattle, lifelong social pariah. Yeah, totally what I meant. Um, <laughs> who uh, wanted to just be like the rest of people and just hey, maybe one more time around. It's not entirely dark. It's it's fairly yeah, it's dark. It's a happy ending. It's a it's just a, like you. I don't know. It's a semi happy ending. Yeah. Uh, my number 49 is uh, much happier. Uh, For real, though. Yes, this is uh, Countdown by Rush. And this mm -hmm. is a song uh, about when they got to go down to Florida mm -hmm. and witness a uh, space shuttle launching or some space, some space thing launching. And so this song is on here because it's kind of a mm -hmm. song best in capturing like just a sense of like wonder and oh, yeah. uh, amazement. It's from their uh, very heavy synth era 
and uh, right because you for some reason prefer the synthy corny eighties era of Rush to anything else they've ever done. Corny. I I um, moving pictures is peak Rush, but then after that I prefer their eighties stuff. Yeah. Okay. I, I I fair enough, but I I'm a bigger fan of like twenty one twelve, and. Uh, well, we might uh, see that on the list later. Might we? But that album itself, that's the thing is their 70s albums were terrible. Well, the albums, yeah, but like the, s- the songs they like, released yeah. were like, you know, I think they were better there than... All right, maybe we should not well, spend the disagree. next 10 this minutes of the video... Rush uh, podcast. <laughs> analyze Rush. What are your thoughts on Presto, um, Mia? <laughs> no. <laughs> that's the correct thought. <laughs> yes. What are your thoughts on Roll the Bones, John? Flawless. No! <laughs> <laughs> incorrect answer <laughs> anyway we're gonna move on to a correct answer uh no, that's a terrible transition nothing to do with rush here's a uh, snow hey 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 by uh red hot chili peppers this is my personal favorite red hot chili peppers song which is strange because you would think i would pick one with like a huge bum, flea bum, thing bum, bum, and he, he also does fine work here but i just love the like particular just it's kind of like the crescendos you talk about well, not entirely crescendo it's like an incredibly slow crescendo so it's like yeah the first part you just got like the guitar drums vocal and you got guitar drums bass a little bit of flute and things and you know harmony vocals and every bit and there's like this nice little chorus and then by the end it's just kind of do 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 everyone's there and it's all i really yeah i just really really enjoy it <coughs> All right, my number 48 is Hammer to Fall by Queen. Yeah! So this is one that's, uh, I guess, the Mia favorite as well. Uh, it's got kind of great lyrics, great vocals, mm-hmm. and harmonies. I love the bridge with kind of like the... Oh, no. Oh, no. And then just oh, like no. that central riff is so like nice and crunchy and big. Yeah, when, the, when they did riffs, they did them well. They didn't do them that often, but uh, that's a great one there. A lot of piano-y things and uh, piano-y things. What's your number forty-seven? My number forty-seven. I guess we're staying in the general eighties, nineties era today for me, or not entirely, but uh, here's "Say It Ain't So" by Weezer. So here's the thing about Weezer. The thing about Weezer is that they 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 have a lot of like really solid. They're kind of like the Foo Fighters. They they have these a lot of like really solid like seven eight out of ten songs but like that there are very few that are like particularly amazing per se uh but this one is the exception to me which again okay this is like their most like well-known title and when you talk about weezer you talk about say it ain't so blah 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 but um the thing about this first of all it's like a little more serious but not so much more serious than the other songs that it's like it's kind of a serious moment on otherwise you know fairly playful blue album but it's not so serious as pinkerton you know Mm -hmm. so um so and it discusses kind of an issue I'm all too conversant with of having an alcoholic father who you know kind of go, goes absent and treats people cruelly and all that good stuff and uh, just the way it, it's it's actually you know the first time I heard it like for real because the first time I heard it was like oh 10 top I have this, I have this list online top 10 uh jerk with guitar at party songs <laughs> and it's like oh I, I listened to like up to the wrestle with jimmy and i'm like oh this is sublime or something you know but but no go further and like that bridge just kind of i just sat there on the bus and went damn dude this got real so yeah weezer my number Sorry. 47 <laughs> is a very strange song uh <laughs> yes this is paraguay <laughs> by iggy pop and this is a, it's off a, actually not a one, it, he's been around a long time. This Very is actually enough. from his album This Decade, like a few years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, with uh, And he's got kind of like a, a super group. He's got, I think, Josh Homme is mm-hmm. producing it and probably also playing guitar. Probably doing, I, I, he's certainly on backup vocals yeah. on that one. The drummer from Arctic Monkeys is on this, mm-hmm. and it's kind of this great song where the first half is this like kind of like acoustic-y thing, but then it goes into this almost like spoken word chant with the like drums and heavy guitar, 
uh, or like oh, a repeated yeah. chant, and then it turns into the chant with Iggy Pop just ranting, ranting for about two minutes nothing. over it, <laughs> ranting about you know, getting away from modern society. And I don't need and all this information and, all this and information you, and laptops. <laughs> you are two timing piece of turd, literally. <laughs> two faced, three timing I mean, piece, piece of, of turd. turd. Yeah, yes. he's got some very. It's just very him creative insult. creatively insulting things and going off and. I think we were just like playing a game the first time I heard this. We were just at your apartment playing Bananagrams or something, and that part started. I'm like, John, did you like? Did it accidentally switch to a podcast where someone's really <laughs> mad about something? And these guys like really angry at each other, and I, this guy's gonna like stomp off the podcast and go heal himself. What just happened? It's beautiful. <laughs> And that was his response. And then I contemplated breaking up. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> All right. What's your number 46? That's not true. Uh, but instead of breaking up, you chose to... Go all the way. Uh, right. It's just, it's an incredibly one-hit wonder, one-hit wonder by this group from like the 70s. The Raspberries. And some of you might have heard this on the Guardians of the Galaxy soundtrack. Fun fact, a young Chris Cornell sings backup vocals on this. How? How young was he? Was he like, like four? Yeah. No. Um, <laughs> yeah, I said you know fun who fact, is in the, not true fact. <laughs> you know who is in the band, who actually led the band, and I didn't know this for a long time, was uh, a dude named Eric Carmen, who would go on to be one of the you know premier songwriters of the 80s and write things that were, you know... Like Carmen Chameleon. No, like... Eric, no, Eric, like, Eric, 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 Carmen Chameleon. <laughs> well, we're not going to confuse him with Eric Cartman, which would be the entirely different... Uh, Sonic sound and be like, hungry eyes, Kyle's mom has hungry eyes, she's fat. <laughs> um, what are you doing? You know, continue on. I just realized, remembered I had changed one of my uh, songs. Oh, right, so right. On my post it as well. Oh, yeah, but anyway, it's Tausch off this really nice power pop, this nice power pop riff, and um, then it kind of goes into this really melodic. Uh, melodic sort of uh you know haunting melody and it's kind of like this great blend of like beauty and power pop you know which is which is kind of a great genre in itself there's a lot of things i like and there's maybe you know primary things to be camp overly dramatic vocals and power pop you know so always good all right my number 46 continuing on the rant train oh, is good. admit it by say anything is which that the is appropriate amount of a probably amount of exclamation points. That's a good points. amount Did of I exclamation points, yes. Did I get it? Okay. Uh, <laughs> that's basically a six minute long rant about uh, the like the posers he doesn't like, about himself that he doesn't like. Now that about really could be all a podcast. Things. Yes. <laughs> I like that rant better than I like the Paraguay rant. They're both uh, great, but <laughs> go on. I like yeah, I like both rants a lot. This is just kind of and kind of the I band love the way the music is goes along with the rant. Going with it. Yeah, like picking up in speed and intensity and just a lot much like the Paraguay rant like a lot of like interesting phrases and clever mm -hmm. lines and things so it's not just somebody like ranting about nothing. ranting yeah I mean literally the first thing you hear when you pronounce like admit it yeah yep. <laughs> am I right okay you're right Compl something completely different folks is the suburbs by Arcade Fire which is number 45 is the suburbs by Arcade Fire or should I say Arcade Fire um, so, uh, my favorite Arcade Fire song, it's, it's fairly simple, actually, is the thing, because, you know, at its core, it's a very simple song, it's just the same four chords on an acoustic guitar, but it's the thing that, things that happen around it that make it, you know, a really beautiful, touching song, you know, it's, it's Wynn Butler being sad again, but it's a very beautiful version of Wynn Butler being sad. And, uh, you know, very memorable sad vocal chorus. in the suburbs, yeah. Out of the suburbs, and uh, there's some kind of war going on throughout the album, and that's the opener of the album, I think. And, uh, but yeah, it's just like that ingenious style of songwriting where you start with a really simple core and then expand it and expand it. It's something I very much appreciate as, like, being a primarily musical songwriter myself. Mm -hmm. <coughs> My number 45 is From Heads Unworthy by Rise Against. Uh, this is the only other song by them on my list, and mm -hmm. this is just kind of one, another one with those great ebbs and flows and intensity, of uh, this one kind of, like, starts you off right in the action, it's just starting mm -hmm. with, like, and then it's got these chorus, great backing vocals, mm -hmm. it's got kind of a mellow acoustic bridge, then 
goes back into the chorus and then goes into like a double time chorus with like the bridges vocals over the chorus again mm -hmm. so just kind of a nice journey nice journey not to be confused with journey who would be in my like bottom 10 <laughs> <laughs> we should do a bottom 10 sometime that'd be fun. bottom 10 artists. look out look out for bonus content guys yeah, this is over all of those type oh. of artists journey foreigner like those like speed wagons Speedwagons were like fine in the 70s. Peter then Frampton. Just the 80s happened. Okay, same thing with Peter Frampton. It's fine in the 70s, the 80s happened. I don't, do you no? feel like I Okay, do not was that like one. If I, like, I like Show Me the Way, okay? Yeah. I like Show Me the Way, and I like those happy songs. And I like that. I kind of like the songs that go wow, womp, 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 womp. Is that a wah cover <laughs> of Driver 8? <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, What's your number 44? Is Fuel by, by Peter Frampton. <laughs> oh, no, that, that would be impossible. <laughs> that is impossible. Okay, so I know people are thinking, why is Fuel the Metallica song on your list when they have so many? There's actually one more on my list, but uh, we'll get there later. But uh, it, here's the thing about the Metallica stuff. There's a lot of fantastic classic songs in the 80s. I think a lot of them kind of go on a tad too long, I suppose. Like, Master of Puppets is fantastic. I never got through more than about five minutes of it. Well, five minutes are right when it builds into the solo. Okay, it's like six minutes. It's like, no, it's like a solo, and then it goes back to the rest of it. Yeah. That's more like, I was like, we got the idea. Cocaine is bad. But um, it's kind of like, and then, they, they, you know, you get the feeling that man, they've written all these songs in the same key. They really like the key of E. Um, this one is not in the key of E. It's in the key of E flat, completely different. The other one that it's I have. It's probably still too long. <laughs> it's about six minutes long. I, I mean, but it's like in parts and it's like well produced and has a memorable hook, obviously. I mean, there, there, I'm sure there's like been thousands of memes made around give me fuel, give me fire, give me that which I desire on. Uh, certainly, I mean, if there haven't been, like, 50 million memes on YES that have come out of hey, James Hetfield all the time. Uh, and yeah, here's a hint for you music theory nerds. The other Metallica song on my list is in the key of B minor. As in, be afraid. My number 44 <laughs> is One Big Holiday by My Morning Jacket. And, uh, there's kind of a great... How many of these am I referring to as jams? <laughs> Too many. A good amount. This one is a like. This jam, is like an actual jam. A jammy song though, yeah. It's like kind by of a like, jam band. Yeah, yeah, like it's almost it's, but it's also like structured, like. Mm. Uh, it's not fish style jam. Yeah, uh, it's got just great, this great like beautiful guitar. It's mm -hmm. like a kind of song you'd hear on like a a forested mountainside with some waterfalls going by. Oh yeah. Especially like the first part of the intro. Then you yeah. get up to the, the, the peak and it starts going. It's like wind up there. Beer, That's like, yeah, you're like heading down the mountain. Yeah, like on skis. You know, no, on a bobsled. And then you hit the bottom and you go. Nah, no, because it's no. not winter. <laughs> if you're like hang gliding down the mountain. And then you land and you go. And either way, you land when it goes. And you like go for a walk and then you climb up another mountain for the rest of the song. Because then it does that again. Right? Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. All right. What's your number 43? <laughs> Bit different. It's Pump It Up by Elvis Costello. Um, again, cliched pick. However, this is like the new waviest new wave song there is. Although like in its own unique sense because it's like extremely distinctive instrumental sound all the way around. It's like, dong, 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 dong. And how is that riff so infectious? It's literally three descending notes, and yet it is. You know, you put on the bass, and you put on the, the organ and the guitar, and it kind of, you know, it's just all, and, you know, obviously your typical Costello lyrics and uh, tongue-in-cheekness and delivery of it, all good stuff. My number 43 is Eminence Front by The Who. This mm -hmm. is one that just kind of, it feels like there's nothing that quite sounds exactly like it. Like, it's kind of, you know, you it's like a funky, funky disco-y thing, but it's also just got these weird digital <laughs> sounds and weird, like, uh, analog synths, like, in the background. It's just kind of, like... It's probably, like, the most solo-y of Pete's solos, too. You know, it's like... Yeah. 
He doesn't normally do like that style of solo per se. And you said it's him singing? It is him singing, yes. Ah, yeah, and so... So it's kind of, he's heralding that one, yeah. Yeah, so he, they have him sing a lot of the good ones. <laughs> are you saying there are, like, an excessive amount of bad ones, or... How, how many no. bad ones do you think there are? <laughs> you know, like, my generation. <laughs> All right, smart butt. All right. All right. We have... Uh, John, we tried to do this last time. Can you give me a... Alright, anyway, um, that's the intro to that one. It's Run of the Hills by Iron Maiden. I uh, Iron Maiden. Oh, oh, please stop. What have I done? Um, so yeah, Run of the Hills. I really gotta wrap this up, don't I? Because otherwise I won't stop being drummed on. Ah! Alright, alright, so Iron Maiden, man, uh, this is de definitely my favorite of their songs, and, 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 yeah, yeah, great vocal performance, but fantastic Bruce Dickinson vocal performance, that's some peak Bruce right there, and, and, uh, you know, some great guitar work, and Steve freaking Harris, man, what's your number 42, please? <laughs> it's a Metropolis Part 1 by Dream Theater, uh, and it I is... like how you just left in, like, the extremely obvious scratch out of learning to live, by yeah, the way. Yeah, I changed my mind, because I remembered that was a song also, that was uh, a song. It was, it was a song. It's it kind was. of like, I only need one Dream Theater song on this mm -hmm. list. It's the per perfect kind of, like, either music to drum along to a feeling very ambitious. Yeah. Or, uh, or rock band to along play to a feeling band. very ambitious. Yeah. Or just great, like, kind of background music. Like, it's enough changes and great parts mm -hmm. and things. Like, this always, th that song always has just the great sense of, like, atmosphere especially like the intro and then mm. coming out of the solo like the kind of build back into the, like this very yeah. like cinematic ending great great stuff number 41 well we discussed this uh so i'll make it quick but it's oliver's army by elvis costello which is a nice abba song about nazism or something yep now I'm realizing I should put Lipstick Vogue on my list. I like that one a lot. Well, he's an honorable mention. Honorable mention. Lipstick Vogue. Amazing Thanks, drum Alex part. Costello. Amazing energy. Rhyming rumor and tumor. Right. Oh, God. I forgot about that. Number 41, <laughs> our final one for this video. Like Eating Glass. Oh, yes. Proper by Block Party. Block Party. Doing block Silent pa Alarm. Doing Silent Alarm. <laughs> Long story. Oh, and, uh, <laughs> this is, uh, another one with great drums, mm. uh, that's also just kind of this very moody song. Uh, it's like moody but danceable. Yeah, it's yeah. like moody but danceable and like... And whining about how cold it is in the house. Full of, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Full of energy. Like, it builds... It's almost like the drums are like the main lead instrument in that song. Yeah. I, I, I'm again going to ask, like, how is it that the person drumming for them now is like fresh out of college <laughs> like way younger than us it's a bit frightening how do people get that much talent stop that woman we're old and decrepit and yeah we're old and decrepit 26 and 27 okay, year old we'll take our pills now we'll All see right, you later if we make it through the no! coronavirus <laughs>